So multi-academy trusts, uh, where, where, where do they stand? Um, well, obviously, for a number of years, it's been the government's policy, certainly while the Conservative government have been in power, to put schools into academies. Um, the perception is that they have a greater level of independence and higher level of educational attainment. That may or may not be true. So in terms of where we currently stand, there are now, uh, and these figures were taken just a few months ago when I was preparing this talk, there are 10,146 academies, but they're in 2,456 trusts. So that means typically the average academy trust contains um, some four academies within it. Putting the local deficit, the, the, the role of the um, delegated authority. Um, now, frequently, a multi-academy trust controls a number of schools. It takes over the old governing body that run everything in terms of your school. There is an argument that you can create a sort of a delegated authority to a local organisation, and that will have a responsibility for domestic things within that particular school. And that will make the old governors feel comfortable. That they've still got certain powers to be involved with certain things. Um, and this is something that we're increasingly seeing. The lease, can it be transferred? Can it be assigned? Consent is important. The transfer of property is via a commercial transfer agreement, a transfer agreement. Uh, typically, if you have a funding agreement in place directly, so say you're currently a single academy trust, um, that agreement can be novated via a form of supplemental funding agreement. So that's dealing really with, with the funding, the property, uh, the real property and the commercial property. So I think get those issues um, sorted out.